welcome. I'm Pastor Marge Neal, and it's been my pleasure serving here. It's been a year now that I've been here helping them through the transition process. So we'll see how many more months I'm here. They're in the midst of the call process, and the call committee has been formed, so they may be getting a surprise in the next, uh, I would say, six months or so. So it was that. I'm trying to think, a couple of announcements. The, anyone who is attending the Eat, Pray, Love class uh, group is canceled for this month and they'll finish up in February. Also, I wanted to let people know that I am starting a spiritual formation group. It's a little workshop, it's seven weeks long. Uh, see, so many of us, we, we want to grow in our discipleship, but how in the world do you do that? And the best way is to do it in a group with, with other people. So we're going to gather on Sundays, it's starting next Sunday at 11.30, right after the service. We'll meet over in the ministry center, and we have this uh, book that we'll go by. Come for the introductory session uh, and, and just learn what it's about and learn, to, do I really need to grow? <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, all you, we all need to grow. We all need to grow, don't we? So many times we finish our confirmation class, and then that's it. Our faith is done. And I want to challenge us and to let us know that we can go beyond that. So uh, come check it out for the first week. That's the introductory. If you like it, stay for the next six weeks. And if you don't, then you can, it's nice. You can go ahead and say goodbye. This, this is not for me. But if you're interested, please come at 1130. Sign up. And if not, just come. Okay, we, can, we don't have to be that formal. I know I already have a couple people that are ready to sign up for that. And I'm trying to think, I don't have any other announcements at this time. So I would say, I think we might, might need a song to get us ready to praise. Why are we here today? We're here to worship, praise God. Are we ready to do it? I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his only name. Sing like ever before, oh my soul, I worship your only name. The sun goes up.
Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. A prayer, or do you want to keep going? Well, we can do a prayer. Okay. What the do heck? Prayer. <laughs> prayer is good. You kind of expect it, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And before we sing our next song, why don't we go ahead and see who is worshiping with us today. Turn around and say hello to, and introduce yourself to someone that you may not even know. <laughs> See if you can recognize people with their masks. <laughs> you want to go ahead with the next song? If you'd like to stand, you're able to do, and want to do that, or you can go ahead and sit for the song. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't stop now. So I call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you
the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. Our first reading today is from Acts 8. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to ask you, do the names Joseph Lister or John Harrington mean anything to you? I had a couple of nods at the first service. You know, most of us haven't heard of them, and yet they've each had a remarkable impact on our lives. If you've ever had surgery and, and lived to tell the tale, you should thank Dr. Joseph Lister. He is the physician who came up with the idea, this wild idea, that doctors should be washing their hands before surgery or wearing clean clothes and sterilizing the instruments. And he was doing this back in the late 19th century. Those protocols were revolutionary in his day, and they have saved countless lives ever since. His name is nearly forgotten today except for you know that mouthwash, Listerine, the one my husband still likes? But how about John Harrington? Well, to be more proper, it's Sir John Harrington. Ever heard of him? Chances are you haven't. He was a poet and a translator in the late 16th century. You've probably never read his poems, but chances are good that today you have utilized one of his inventions. Sir John Harrington invented the flush toilet. If you've ever wondered why the bathroom is sometimes called the John, it's because it was named after John Harrington. The world is filled with people whose names we'll probably never know but whose lives have profoundly and positively impacted the lives of others. And at the same time, this world is filled with people whose names who we do know, people whose faces grace the magazine covers and the television screens today, but who will be utterly forgotten in 50 years, let alone 500. In today's scripture reading, we're going to see that very thing. And we are going to be encouraged to be among those who positively impact the lives of others by humbly blessing them. 
So I invite you, if you'd like, there's a Bible in the pew in front of you. You can turn to Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, and then 5 to 16. Or you can listen and follow along. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Atyria and Trachonitis and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus had been baptized and was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, with you. I am well pleased. I don't know about you, but I know most of our lay leaders, when they volunteer to read scripture, they pray they never get a lesson like that one with all those names. Those crazy, those exotic names, Tiberius, Lysanias, Herod of Antipas, and Annas. You know, most of us, we have no idea who those people are. And nor do we recognize the region that they are identified with. But Luke's original audience, they knew them. To them, they were very familiar names. In fact, they were the quick who's who of the political and religious elite of the day. I suspect that Luke included them in his gospel for a couple of reasons. First, he, he wanted to locate the story of Jesus in history. And then throughout his gospel, Luke will be telling us that, that following Jesus has both political and religious implications. But here's what I want you to notice. While all of those names were familiar to the first century, the main characters of this story, Mary and Joseph, Elizabeth, Zechariah, and especially John the Baptist, they were not familiar names. They were ordinary people, just faces in the broad sweep of ancient history. And yet, 2,000 years later, no one remembers the names of the rich and the famous, Tiberius, Lysanias, Herod of Antipas, but we all know John the Baptist. John's life changed the world. We could say a lot about John the Baptist. You know, he was a pretty colorful figure. But I want to draw your attention to just one thing about John, his humility. Yes, John the Baptist, he was bold. And yes, he spoke the truth to the religious leaders of his day. But John was a humble man. Think about that moment in our lesson today when the crowds, when they're asking John if he was the Messiah. You see, John, he had very suddenly become a popular figure. He had charisma. The people responded to him, and they followed him in droves. John, he was leading this popular and this growing movement. And that kind of popularity can expand your ego. Can't you just imagine John thinking, you know, I'm kind of a big deal. Look at all these crowds following me. 
maybe I am the Messiah. But that's not how John responded. I'd ask you to take a moment, underline in your Bibles, in your bulletins, well, you don't have it in your bulletin, but in your Bible, what, he, what his response was. I baptize you with water, but someone is coming sooner who is greater than I, so much greater that I am not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. What a remarkable response. Can you imagine a Hollywood star or a prominent political figure today saying of, of some upcoming star or upcoming leader, oh, there's someone so much better than me coming along. I'm not even worthy to be their publicity agent. It's not likely to happen. That kind of humility is rare. But that's the kind of humility John had. And see, humility is not about denying our gifts or magnifying our faults. Humility isn't thinking less of yourself than you should. Humble people, they don't really think about themselves much at all. Humble people, they think about the needs of others and how God can meet those needs through them. Humble people. They offer who they are and what they have to God's service. And that's what John did. And God changed lives through him. And I believe, I believe that's how God wants to positively impact the lives of others. I invite you to think back. Think back on your own lives. Think about the people who have had profoundly positive impact on you. Think about the people who brought the best out of you, the people who have made you better, invested in you, or helped you to navigate a difficult time. Bring that someone to mind right now. And I'm willing to bet that they were not rich or famous and powerful. I'm willing to bet that they were ordinary people just like you and me, and God used them in extraordinary ways. So many ordinary people like that have had an impact in my life. I remember a time back when I was going in to have surgery. And this was back when I was 27, so that's over 40-some years ago. I was in the hospital by myself. My mother couldn't be there. And I had this cyst on my ovary the size of a grapefruit. And I remember being scared and wondering what's going to happen. Well, in the, as they're getting ready to wheel me out, there's this older woman in the, in the bed next to me, this grandma type. I wasn't a grandma back then. She gets out of her bed, and she comes over, and she gives me a kiss on my forehead. And she tells me, you're going to be all right. In that moment, she gave me that hope, that love, that peace. After 40 years, I still remember that. What humble people has God used to powerfully impact your life? And you know what's pretty amazing? If we were to ask those humble people in our lives and let them know in a profound way how they impacted upon us, you know what they'd probably say? They say, what? Who? Me? I didn't do anything. Humble people usually aren't even aware of God, of what God is doing through them and blessing others' lives. And I'm guessing that was true of even of John the Baptist. This week, I want to challenge you to become even more aware of the fact that that's true for you too. I don't know how God will use you. What I do know is that God does use ordinary, humble people, just like you and me, to change the world by impacting one life at a time. And that journey begins by humbly becoming, coming before the Lord and saying, God, 
I'm yours. I commit all that I am and all that I have to serving you, serving those around me. Open my eyes to see. Open my hands to serve. Open my heart to love. You'll find that prayer on the back of your bulletin. I would invite you to pray it each morning and just see what God does through you. And let's begin that journey now by praying it together. God, I'm yours. I commit all that I am and all that I have to serving you by serving those around me. Open my eyes to see, open my hands to serve, open my heart to love. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger Interposed his precious love Oh, oh to grace, the grace of debtor Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, oh. Take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. And where's the godparents? Get yourselves up here. If, if that's going to be helpful for you, absolutely. Um, I think I'll get one of them to hold it. That'll be good. Okay. How's he doing? Is he going to allow them to, to hold them or not? Okay. Yes, usually the godparents get to present him. And I was going to hold him, but I think I'm, I'm all wired up, so I think that might be a little, little difficult, so we'll do that. Come on over here a little closer. I won't bite you, I promise. Okay. Hey there, little buddy. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. 
By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So who presents Daniel? I present Daniel Robert Shunk for baptism. I present Daniel Robert Shunk for baptism called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God. Do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? If so, respond, I do. And as you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the, Christ, in the Christian faith and life? Godparents, do you promise to nurture this person in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the church? If so, respond, I do. I do. And people of God, do you promise to support Daniel and pray for him in his new life with Christ? If so, respond, we do. We do. I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus. Reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. It's the old way it had the again in there. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give thanks. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By baptism, careful, don't you take that, thank you. By baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Okay. Would you like to hold this for me? Yes. About right here. And Daniel, if you want to come over here, my dear, we're going to take you and we're going to see if we can do this without getting electrocuted. That's what I was worried about. Robert Daniel Schunk, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. No, he was good. You belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Praise God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and through the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons a new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Daniel with the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Okay. Daniel, I have something for you here. There you go. You are marked with the cross of Christ, sealed by the Holy Spirit forever. Now he cries. Do you want to hand me that candle there? And let's. It's all right, Mom. It's, he's allowed to cry. In the old days, if the babies didn't cry, they used to pinch them so that they would cry so that the evil spirits would leave them. Hmm. So he did it on his own. So Daniel, child of God, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. And you may take that. And then at the, the anniversary of his baptism, take it out and say a prayer for him. Okay. And now, for the, uh, let us welcome our newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Okay, you may blow that out. And if you would like to introduce, this is our newest member here. <laughs> yeah, Dad, you're just along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> and now at this time, we have another special that we have to do in this service, and that is to recognize and install our council members. So as our baptismal crew is going back to their seats, these following persons, having been elected by the congregation to positions of leadership, are asked to come forward as their offices and their names are read. Ann Fosber, President, please come forward. Debbie Rescott, Vice President. Dr. Michael Miller, he was at the first service, our secretary. Beverly Kennedy was also at the first service. Lee Russell, our property, was at the first service. Angelica Domsky, our worship, was at the first service. Guy Demrit, stewardship, was at the first service. Stephanie Butera, I think, I think John can come up because he's the one that attends the meetings. <laughs> Kathy Luters, they're the social ministry. That's, that's our food pantry. God bless you. Kathy Luters, our evangelism committee. And Sue Hall, our Christian education chair. Linda Russell, she was at our first ser a service. She's our treasurer. And Michelle Davis, our financial secretary advisor. You are, you're not off the hook yet, dear. <laughs> In holy baptism. Our Lord Jesus Christ liberated you from sin and death and made you members of his church. Through word and sacrament, you have been nurtured in the faith 
I ask you to gather with all who are gathered. I'm not going to ask you to repeat that because we've already done the Apostles' Creed. But those are the words that we were all baptized in, in those Apostles' Creed of what we actually believe. This is what St. Paul writes. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for a particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some ways in each person for the good of all. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and the deeds of this household of faith reflect him in whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and the work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. Now, on behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully to carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, respond yes by the help of God. And you, people of God, I ask you, will you support these? Go ahead and turn around for a moment. Will you support these, your elected leaders? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, respond yes by the help of God. I now declare you installed as council members and officers of this congregation. God bless you with his Holy Spirit that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Thank you. And I'll ask you to stand as you are able as we continue with the prayers of the church. By the Holy Spirit. You gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service that all people may know they are precious in God's sight. God of grace, hear our prayer. You reveal your love and power through the water and the spirit Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all, and protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace, hear our prayer. Establish among the nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen an advocate, advocates who risk reputation and retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. God of grace, hear our prayer. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. We pray especially for those in our midst, our families and neighbors, for Myron, for John, Catherine, Anchi, Brian, Alex, Steve, Bob, Carl, and Jenny, and those whom we now name aloud and in the silence of our hearts. Comfort all who are in need, God of grace. 
We are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice seeking. God of grace, hear our prayer. You created each of your saints for your glory. We give thanks for those who have called by name into your eternal embrace. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. God of grace, since we have such a great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us give thanks for all the gifts that we have received this day. Gracious God, blessed are you, God sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us in our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. You can ready your little cups for uh, communion at this time. And after we say the Lord's Prayer, we'll, we'll take it at that time. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. Gave it to all, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us be so bold to pray in those words that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go ahead and share the meal together. And remember that there is a place for you all and, and for all. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, Bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Let us sing together our sending song.
Your love is devoted Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old And your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon With mercy for today Faithful you have been And faithful you will be You pledge yourself to me And it's why I sing Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You father the orphan, your kindness makes us whole, and you shoulder our weakness, and your strength becomes our own. Now you're making me like you, clothing me in white, bringing beauty from ashes, for you will have your bride. Free of all her guilt And rid of all her shame And known by her true name And it's why I sing Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on, you will be praised, you will be praised, with angels and saints we sing worthy of. Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my Amen. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world and share the good news. Thanks be to God. Be to God. And please, as you're on your way out, grab one of the baptismal cupcakes on the back table there. <laughs> All right. Cupcakes. All right.